let's just let's get it started. <laughs> Sounds uh, good. This is going to be uh, recorded and on our website as well, in case you guys miss any of this. Yeah, yeah, I'm recording it right now. So anybody that misses it, don't worry too much. Uh, it's, you'll only be a little while behind. We'll upload it for you. So I guess we'll just start at the top of this list. We got some questions from OTC Avenger. Um, this first question, what's the status of uplisting to QTCQB? Um, do you anticipate meeting requirements for NASDAQ in the near future? You know, that's a great question. Uh, I believe I mentioned in the past that we thought we would be there by May and I apologize for my optimism. Um, the only thing really holding us up is the audits. The auditors have been in South Carolina uh, auditing Cornerstone. That took uh, much longer than we anticipated. Um, they, you know, they've been a private company, so getting their books ready for the public world is literally took too much longer than, than we thought. We have auditors here now in San Diego as we speak, working on SRC and uh, the subsidiaries here. You know, I anticipate that could take another four to six weeks, and as soon as that is completed, we can do the application for the uplist for the QB, and I believe that's a 30-day process from there. You know, we, as far as uplisting to the... Um, uh, NASDAQ or the QX, you know, we have the independent board members that we uh, brought on this year. Go NASDAQ, we'd have to bring on a few more. The first step would uh, be getting the Form 10 done, and that would be getting the rest of our subsidiaries audited. But as soon as we get the QB uplist done, that's our next piece. We're going to bring the auditors in. They're going to start knocking out the uh, other subsidiaries. And so we are prepared to uplist as, as soon as we feel the company is ready. Sounds great. <laughs> um, so the summer months are historically good for business. How do you see that uh, relaying into market performance? Um, how does the current market validity factor into the stock performance? Well, that's definitely true. Summer is uh, always our, our best months. We're really moving into our seasons. Uh, you know, with the new acquisitions of uh, U.S. Solar Network and Future Home Power, you know, they've just added monster revenues to us there you know jason's surprising me every day with his ability and pablo has been doing the same thing with us solar networks so i really anticipate blowing you guys away with our uh revenues for the balance of the year uh, as far as you know our share price seems like when we're doing the best our share price is the highest or excuse me when we're doing the best our share price is the lowest and when we're you know things are just putts along our share price is the highest so i, I don't like to get involved in the share price, but I can tell you one thing, we're working on the results and we're going to bring them in for you. And as far as, uh, you know, the market, I think everyone's looking for value. And I believe that SRC is going to bring really good value. You guys will see the numbers start coming in with the current pieces that we just added. All right. And um, how many acquisitions are underway? And can you share any info on that? You know, that's kind of a twofold question. Um, I don't know if everyone really understands the value that U.S. Solar Network has. We put the map on the press release to just show the different areas that we're open up in. So U.S. Solar Network is exactly what it says. It's a it's a network throughout the United States. It's in 38 states. It, it has 70 plus sales teams. It has over 35 install teams. So we're currently just expanded from five states to 38 states. And we don't really have to do the acquisition that we're looking at. We don't have to bring in the different companies and the personalities and the audits. You know, with uh, Pablo's network, we still get to claim all the revenue because we run the entire network and we can open up in any area that, that we need to without any additional cost or any additional share. So we, we are looking at three acquisitions now. Um, they would have to be really, really special, really right price for us to proceed with them. But, uh, you know, we, we just, you know, My for God. the bottom line, we just opened up 38 new acquisitions with the uh, uh, per purchase or the um, acquisition of U.S. Solar Networks. Jeez. Oh, Wow, yeah, no, that sounds great. And um, so there's a name change. Um, when does that go into effect? Uh, does the ticker symbol change at all? You know, the name change has never been announced. It kind of leaked out that we did apply for the, uh, the name change with FINRA, and we do have the domain Solar EV or Solar Rev. God. And we're still looking at that. It's, it's currently on pause. We're actually working on a licensing agreement with an energy company that that could give us massive expansion and it might go put into effect a different name. So we're, we're, we're just on pause with the name change until we get that figured out. But I think, uh, 
this month or early next month, we'll have that figured out. We'll be able, be able uh, make that an announcement for us. Okay, so for now, you just have a domain, basically. Yeah, we have a domain. We did file with FINRA to change a name, and it's just on pause. It's not. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, I'm doing a name sense. change, a ticker symbol change. It's kind of a big deal, and and we are very much in the solar EV market. That's where we want to be. And you know, I didn't mention this earlier, but with Pablo, you know, that also put us in 38 states with EV because we now have Plemco, who's a government contractor who gets government contracts all throughout the United States. But now we have dealers that can implement the actual work that we that we get from Plemco. So it's just truly just a perfect fit. But you know, the name change is uh, we just want to do it right and. Uh, and we and, and we want to do it once, so we just want to make sure we make the right choice. No, that's definitely a, a good call. Um, so, next question: Do you anticipate reverse splits or issuance of new shares as a necessary part of meeting uplisting requirements in the future? You know, we would never do a reverse split unless it added value, and the only you know that's would be go to Nasdaq or the QX or you know a much higher uh, board. Um, you know, we're not going to just do it to. Um, lower the share count and, and uh, reduce the value of, of the uh, shares for the shareholders. So I don't see one coming. If we go to NASDAQ, obviously, we'd probably have to do one. Uh, but if, you know, obviously going to NASDAQ is a good thing. It brings a lot more value and we're, uh, you know, we're really accomplishing the goals that we're trying to accomplish. But nothing in the near future, All again, right. unless we're doing a major uplist. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's happy to hear that. <laughs> um all right, you want me to skip this question? We'll come back to it at the end. It's uh, it's that 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 tree question. <laughs> I actually like the tree question. <laughs> All right, yeah, we could do it now. So, if SIRC was a tree, what kind would it be and why? Yeah, I don't know the names of different trees. Yeah, I grew up from Indiana. We had oak trees and maple trees and pine trees, but yeah, you know, we'd be a tree that needs a lot of sunshine and we can withstand the storms and hold up really well through uh, turbulent times or. And we're ready to grow and ready to flourish. So you guys can help me come up with that kind of tree. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll move on to the questions from iHub real quick, just because that's towards the top of the list. So an update on the QB uplist status. What's that? Uh, do you have an update on the QB uplist status? That was the first question. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Oh, you know, let's see. If you decide to take a break from acquiring more companies, when can we expect fully audited financials? You know, that's a, that's a question I've been getting for a year now and I keep missing the answer every year. So, uh, I'm, you know, as, as long as it takes, I got to think SRC will be done end of August at the latest. And I think with our, our audit, auditing firm that we could, knock out a company a month or six weeks. So, you know, worst come to worst, um, end of this year, I think we'd have everything audited and ready to go for that place. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see. All right. Basically answer this. Um, how is SR SIRC staffing up quickly enough to do this work? Um, in in uh, in reference to the installation, you know, again, that's um, that the neat that's a neat thing about Pablo's network is, since we've joined forces with Pablo and U.S. Uh, Solar Networks, I was in Scottsdale this last week, and I believe we brought in seven more sales dealers and like six more install dealers. So his 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 network is really, really great for contractors and sales teams because they let them focus on their specialty. So it, it really raises their bottom line. It really helps us. So we're getting staffed up as, as we speak just by adding dealers to his network. Let me give you an idea. Pablo, I spoke with him today. He, with uh, Future Home Power, he just took on 45 projects that Future Home Power sold last month. So he has a very detailed pro forma that he puts out and he says that with the with the us joining forces, pro forma has kind of been blown out the window because it's it's so much larger than what we really anticipated at the very beginning. All right. All right. Um, so the next two questions are in relation to uh, FHP. Uh, the first question is: Do a hundred percent of the revenues coming into FHP belong to SIRC? 
when we first when uh, I first met Jason, uh, FHP was a sales org, but now he's a and so and his revenues uh, at that time were brought over to SRC, but we could not count 100 percent of the revenues because they weren't on SRC paper. Now he's using uh, total SRC paper and contracts. So yes, we can count all of his revenues. Now, if you take a look at the uh, sales report I put out last week, we did make a note they did sell 6 million, but we couldn't claim all 6 million because some of that was uh, uh, part of his original way he did things before we acquired him. But from this point on, yes, we can. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, all of his, all of the future projects from FHP are going to SIRC Cruise for installation? Well, either or, Cruise or, or, or Pablo's network. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, so one way so, or the other. Yeah, I think it's kind of like Cornerstone. Cornerstone sells the roofs and, and uh, they buy the material, but they typically have a subcontractor that does the job. Well, FHP sells projects so <laughs> at such a great rate that the SIRC crews themselves cannot keep up with it. I mean, I, play, I believe our backlog for SRC is like to November. So to keep the revenues up and keep up with demand that you know we're bringing on Pablo's teams and Pablo's contractors to, to help get us caught up. All right. And um, what about the status for any government grants for SIRC? I just spoke with a, the guy's name is Jack. I spoke with uh, about the grant. And when I was in Scottsdale, he gave me a call and thought we were looking good. He feels like we'll, we'll get two. I got to admit, he might be one of the best sales guys I ever met. So when he says it, I, I, I take it that way. But we, uh, we're definitely in line and we're definitely in the right space. And it will be a be very exciting if it shows up that he feels like we're, we're, in a, we're in a good spot all right um okay here's another question uh basically related to the cruise um what's the rough percentage ratio of full-time employees versus subcontractors well that's <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you don't have an exact uh, figure in front of you obviously well we have I mean, are we talking roofing or roofing and solar, or just? Uh, um, one or the other does it say? It doesn't say. I would assume. I would assume the solar. Yep. You know, we we kind of like the model of of in the solar side having the uh, install crews do the work. I mean, everything is contained. The costs are are contained. That they're built in the model. They're built in the budget. Uh, we don't have the 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 liability of having the employees. So it's probably down uh, with the Cornerstone acquisition because they sub everything out and the um, U.S. Solar Network is probably 80-20 subcontractors versus employees, which I think is a good model and it gives us uh, the ability to to grow and expand without any additional cost. Yeah, that's definitely a good way to do it. Um. Let's see. So what's your one-year outlook for the solar market in the face of increasing interest rates, inflation, cost of materials, plus the push to reduce net metering by utilities? You know, that's a great question. Um, here in Southern California, and, uh, and you know, our, one thing is definitely going up is the cost of fuel and cost of electricity. So it's, it's booming here. You know, the we haven't really seen uh, any price increases this year in the solar solar uh, division we have seen it roofing but not in the solar you know i think with the uh, uh current administration and just with the current awareness of green energy i think solar and ev and electric cars and this and this entire space is going to keep growing and growing and growing i definitely know that we're in a paradigm shift and i think every house in the united states is going to have solar on it and within the next five or ten years so i I think we're in a great space, and you know we have to balance the roofing too, which you know never stops. You know, rain, leaky roofs, and storms—they they never stop. They just keep going. No, I mean that's that's so true. Like uh, my neighbor, two houses down, needed to replace his roof, and you know while he was at it, he put solar on it, and uh, yeah. probably not even in a great location for solar, but he figured while he was doing it, might as well get the panels up there. You know, the neat thing about it is, is you know the tax law reads that if you need to replace all or part of your roof, it's not excluded from the tax credit. So you can very easily put the package together that can include the roof, get it financed, lower their monthly bill, add value to the home. That's a perfect fit. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. Oh, has SIRC been approached by any large businesses looking to acquire it? No, that's 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 funny you say that. Uh, uh, I'm getting I'm getting some chats. That's all I can say now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the second part of that question is: If so, are you considering it? What price point would you consider selling for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, we, we, we think, you know, we, we would only do that if, if we got acquired to go to NASDAQ. You know, we, we'd want to go up to do something like that. And, you know, we, we think, you know, with our current revenue stream that we have, we think we're drastically undervalued. So we, it would be a it would be a future type number to, to do something like that. Sure. OK. Um... Oh, will the building noted as being purchased in the annual rep, uh, annual report be the new headquarters for uh, solar solar EV? The building that was purchased in the annual report. It, do you have an, does it have an address or what building they're talking about? It does not. You know, we, you know, we're we're currently looking for a headquarters to combine secure mckay and milholland and uh possibly u.s solar network but you know we have not you know, we have not landed a building yet so I'm, I'm a little unsure about that question gotcha okay um does the company have any plans to build out its own ev charging infrastructure attached to a subscription slash pay per watt model or will all ev chargers be sold and installed on a per unit basis you know currently we're um doing the EV chargers uh being sold and installed on a per unit basis um we we haven't seen a model where you know it really pays to put in EV chargers and charge for them if if you know we're it's we're not saying we won't do it but it would have to be the right model and it would have to make sense and it would have to make money sure um is the EV division talking to any car manufacturers about doing any potential partnerships you know, Tim hasn't yet. He's he's really really busy in the government uh, arena. I mean, he's getting he, he literally he's constantly hiring. He's constantly bringing new uh, sales folks and engineers that can help him keep up with the demand just to get the proposals out in the government world. So he's 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 uh he's kind of maxed out at this point. All right. Oh, has the company thought about doing any partnerships with gas stations um, to install all their EV chargers? Uh, we, we haven't yet. Okay. Haven't yet, but it's a good idea. Um, all right, here's one. I noticed Sunworks advertises like crazy on Instagram and other social media platforms. Any plans for sp spinning up social media campaign? Um. Yeah, we have a press release, I think, coming out this week that we have a, uh, are you able to hear me still? Yeah, yep. Okay. My, my computer changed faces. I want to make sure I still had you. Um, we have a number of different marketing companies that we use, and uh, we're going to do a press release on uh, approved home pros that is a, just a total marketing company that's, that's going to add a substantial amount of revenue here locally, and he's going to expand nationwide, and his entire campaign with radio, TV, uh, social media. So yes, we are. We really, you know, our focus since we have U.S. Uh, solar network and we feel, feel like we have all the pieces is to start uh, building the top line from from within and and, and growing uh, SRC through marketing and expanding and expanding and making our current uh, companies more efficient and building everything from within. All right, let's keep going then. What percentage of the business can continue to thrive slash expand during winter months? You know, again, I think that's our fire and fire and rain model that we have. That you know, in the, in the if you're a regular solar company and you're sitting at home watching sports during the winter months because it's raining, but if you're a roofing company, your phones are ringing off the hook and you still have the revenue. So every one of our companies have the ability to do roofing and solar at the same time. So it's, you know, it's a steady, busy time of year. It's not like summer with big revenues, but it, it does keep us busy. All right. Um, 
All right, back to the charging stations. Um, can you provide any insight into the charging station aspect of the company and any future ac acquisitions related to the charging stations? I'm sorry, would you say that one more time, please? Yeah, yeah. Can you just provide any insight into like the charging aspect, uh, the charging station aspect of the company and any future acquisitions related to it? Yeah, you know, we we're uh, still in contact with the company out of Denver um, now. Since we have Pablo's network of the thirty-seven installers throughout the United States, it it would make it easier to, to to team up with him and expand that way. We haven't uh, looked at it right now. We're you know with a future on power and U.S. solar networks, two very recent monster additions. We we kind of have our hands full, but. Uh, as we get you know get things ironed out and rolled out, you know we're definitely looking to expand and definitely looking to add value. All right. Um, will SIRC instantly benefit from the DOE's new Solar App Plus? Solar App Plus. Are you talking about the uh, one where uh, the for the permit? I yes, I believe so. Plus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. It is about the permits. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're 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 pretty on top of things, and uh, you know, we do a good job of turning jobs around. So, obviously, that will add some efficiencies to our process. But it's it, you know, it's not a you know, it's not a game game changer by any means. But it does make us a little bit more efficient. Makes the process more efficient. Okay. All right, and then just there's a couple questions about Pablo Diaz. So one person wants to know what he brings to the table, which I think you basically already <laughs> went over, um, okay. you know, with the charging and all that. And then the other one is, I assume you're fully aware of the legal issues that come along with Mr. Diaz. If so, how has SIRC, SIRC held harmless from these matters? Yeah, we are aware of it. We are, you know. I, I didn't get into all the details of the, the litigation, but our attorneys did work with his attorneys. We're 100% indemnified from the lawsuit. Uh, if we have tired attorneys, they're paying all of our attorney fees. We have not issued him any shares, and he will not get issued any shares until this lawsuit is over. Um, you know, I understand that you know him and his, and his last situation have parted ways, and they're just kind of working out the details of how they're going to, you know, uh, separate things. So I think, I think that's about over. You know, we, we entered the agreement based on that. So I, I think it, it, we felt like it was such a valuable piece that it was worth the, the, um, hate to use the term risk, but just we thought the opportunity was bigger than the risk to join him because it just was our perfect piece. So again, I, we're, we're very confident this is going away pretty soon. All right. Yeah. That's a good answer. Um, all right. Uh, SIRC owns 60% of Plemco and Solar USA. Um, can SIRC report all revenues or how does that work? Yes. we. Uh, it's one of our models that we oftentimes do is we only buy 60%, but we do get to claim the revenue and we do keep the current ownership in place. And so they're just excited to put the, uh, you know, the dollars to the bottom line as, as we are. So yes, we can claim all the revenues. Okay. Um, what, is, what is the current debt level for SIRC, and do you consider it manageable? Yeah, you know, we have we have premium debt on the balance sheet. We have uh, a couple little ten or fourteen thousand dollar notes that we're paying off this month or next. And then you know, the, I think we have. I'm not far me, but I want to say maybe fifteen, sixteen million dollars in. Uh, convertible notes that are premium notes that they convert at anywhere from three to five dollars a share so it's someone that invested in us knowing that you know feeling like our share price was undervalued and they know that when we repay them they're going to get you know they're, they're, they're going to convert at a higher price instead of a discounted price which is pretty common in, in the pink sheet industry so we're you know if you do the math i'd say it's 20 million and it's uh Five dollars a share. That means we'd have to give them four, give them four million shares to get the debt paid off. So that's that's very manageable for us. All right. Um, 
So he also says there's some 76 million of goodwill on the balance sheet. Can you explain what this is and how it affects the company's financial position? I think that's a CFO question. I know that with uh, with the Cornerstone acquisition, you know, we paid a premium to get Hunter and his network on board. And I think we'll really realize the value of that now since we have Pablo's network because he goes hand in hand in that network, taking his following in the roofing world and helping them get involved in uh, U.S. solar networks to just add to the solar volume with the roofing contractors across the United States. So it's it's a um, it's a number that we would like to not be so high but we're going to take that goodwill and we're going to turn it into re results and make the most of it all right um okay here's a good one so timmy from ihub what is the single number one concern you have for sirc in achieving success and eventual profitability as a company I'm thinking about that one. Um, he, he does say it's a tough question. And there's transparency <laughs> <yeah>. required. <laughs> you, you, you know what? So, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this five years and we've had, it's, it's been a ride, and especially those who've been with me all this time. And I know a lot of you have. And, you know, our, our concerns have always been uh, getting the right partners, which we've done. Our concerns about raising money at the right price, which we've done. Our concerns have been keeping the share share count uh, down, which we've done. I've no, you know, I've got a lot of of comments about the share count going up so much, but I tell everyone that you know last year we did fifteen million dollars, and this year we're on track to do one hundred fifty million. So it's not like the share count went up ten times; it only doubled. So I think we've done a good job. I'm I'm very very optimistic for the rest of this year, and I think we're going to blow everyone's mind with what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I think we're going to. I think we'll be profitable this year. I mean, our entire focus now is uh, growing the top line, growing the bottom line, cutting back some expenses and start making real money. I mean, my goal next year for me to feel like I was successful is have a $250 million company making $25 million. That's, that's what 2022 would, would be, uh, make me feel like we were very successful. All right. Um, okay, let me read this question quick. All right, so in, in seven months or so, if the stock price remains flat, um, will the company have to uh, have to issue additional shares to the uh, to Hunter for Cornerstone transaction? You know that is part of his make whole agreement. Yes, but I'm I'm very very confident that would not happen. We're 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 very confident that we we will issue very very few more shares. And I, we're very confident we'll get our revenues to fifteen to twenty million dollars a month. And I, you know, if you do the you know do the math. I'd say we do one hundred fifty million dollars. That gets uh, let's say a three times revenue. That's four hundred fifty million. I mean, that's a dollar fifty two dollars stock price there. So I, I think we'll. Uh, I think our share price is very depressed, and I think it will. Uh, I think the results will start start changing that. All right. And um, how many more warrants slash convertible instruments does he expect to be solved in uh, solved for in the next twelve months with shares issued in the sub thirty to forty cent per share range? Um, I don't. I don't know of any other warrants that are actually issued. We had a, yeah, you know, we we had a note from a couple of years ago where they had a warrant kicker in there if we if something happened and something kicked that in that was really disappointing but we don't have any other warrants and we don't really have any other instruments i, I can think of off the top of my head that would 
uh, affect issuing a, a, a lot of shares for debt. All right. Well, hey, that's, that's definitely good. Um, so a few people in here are asking um, any plans for a CFO hire. You know, we're currently using Aid Bailey, who uh, they're our interim CF CFO, and they have uh, Wanda Wiskoski. I hope I was, I'm saying her last name right, and then Matt Youngman. And, you know, they're both brilliant. They're both helping out with the audit. You know, they're near a monthly expense, but they've filled in nicely as a CFO. Uh, I like using them. them um, so until the audits are done, we don't plan on making any changes. But if we fa find the right candidate, we'll, we'll definitely put them in place. But I think... Uh, between Matt and Wanda and their team, that they're they're a perfect fit for all we're going through right now. All right. Um, let me see. I'm just going through. Looks like you've answered a lot of these questions. Um, a lot of them doubling up. Oh, so, something I do want to clear up that, uh, you know, uh, I know everyone's concerned about a reverse, and I mentioned that we would possibly do a reverse if we went to the NASDAQ. Well, obviously our goal is to grow the share price and grow the revenue and grow the profit, and so we get the price up there, and so we wouldn't have to do a reverse, and everyone would win at that point. So that's that, that's our goal. But, yeah, again, our only reason that we'd ever want to do a reverse is to get to the big board. That's that's one of the big questions that I keep seeing doubling up. So yeah, yeah. great you reiterated on it. Oh, let's see. All right. In the weekly slash monthly SIRC meetings, do you discuss SIRC as an acquisition target for other bigger companies? Um, I think you kind of went in on this. If anybody was reaching out to you. Yeah. You know, we have some larger companies sniff around and we're talking with them, but, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're, we, we have our hands full right now growing our company with, with everything that we've done in the last six months. So that's our, that's our general focus is, uh, creating revenue in, internally and creating profit and growing the company or, or organically. That's, that's our current goals. All right. Oh, here's a great question. Would the company consider getting into wind as a source of power uh, to go into the battery walls in a home alongside of the solar? We would consider it if we would find the right partner. I, I don't believe that anyone on our team now has any wind experience. So, uh, you know, we found a partnership that did solar and wind and they had a lot of wind experience and could add value. We would definitely consider it. We would, we would consider any clean energy alternative that makes sense to create a partnership all right um all right will sirc initiate a buyback or have corporate insiders buy shares at the current price to ensure retail confidence you know we actually you know we're working on some things now with uh i, I don't know if this has been announced but uh Brian Melholland, our president, he just retired. He, had, I don't know if everyone knew that, but he had a heart attack in, uh, I think, January, February of last year. Excuse me, this year. So he's uh, retired, um, and we're uh, we're buying back some of his shares, and so he can retire. So that's going to reduce a lot of his preferred, and and we're uh, working on uh, reducing some of the common shares as well. We guess you know we're trying to do it the right way to create the value. So we are working hard to reduce the share count. And I'm going to do something myself with my shares to get my shares reduced as well. All right. Um, here's another one. There's 13, I guess he means 13 million in convertible class B preferred shares on the most recently published um, sheets. Are these expected to convert at the 10 to one common stock rate within the next 12 months? <laughs> Those 13 million shares are Brian and ours, and that's exactly what I talked about. Okay. We're going to... I, yeah. I kind of figured I'd figure yeah, read yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we're going to we're gonna be uh, knocking that down quite a bit. I don't. I doubt if those ever convert, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, here you go. Are, are you as a company worried about any of the macro environments out there? Inflation, fear, COVID variant, 
China issues, etc. Yeah. You know, the short answer is no, we're not. You know, we keep our head down and we keep working. I think, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think that this environment that we're in is great for the clean energy um, spectrum that, that we're in. And, you know, so the gas prices keep going up and inflation keeps going up. You know, the cost of energy keeps going up. You know, I just think everyone's going to look for ways to save money. And I don't think there's a soul out there that we can see that we can't go see them and, and save them money. So I think we're in a great space. All right. Um, what actions have the what actions has the company taken to tap into previously untapped markets? Uh, for example, new construction. You know, we, we, we have a rep here that's been in the new construction world and we, we've done some projects there. The, the, the model is a good model, but it's a pretty low margin model. And it's a, it's a, you know, your money doesn't turn around very quickly. I've been in the new construction roofing world back in 2006 and seven, and it wasn't ideal, but, um, you know, our big expansion that we had is, is, uh, us solar networks. And they're just adding those dealers and adding the, uh, Contractors. I mean, that was just that, that was a grand slam. That was, that was a home run. All right. Um, can you give a few concrete examples of efficiencies achieved from re recent acquisitions? You know, it's kind of the same answer with uh, Pablo adding his network. You know, we've you know my job's going to completely change with acquisitions, and we're just going to build a network, and we're going to build a sales team, and we're going to grow grow the company or, organically, and just we'll be much more efficient. We won't have to take you know give the shares or the cash away to new subsidiaries and bring in new talent. We we have all the talent right here that we need to grow. And again, Pablo's growing. You know, give you I, I might have mentioned this earlier, but when I was in uh, Scottsdale, he, his new. Uh, Project manager, he brought, he brought on brought on seven dealers last week, and give me an idea. A dealer is a sales org, and a sales org can bring you five jobs a month or a hundred jobs a month. And sound like he got a few of those that are on the bigger side, so that just changes everything. I mean, just you bring in a hundred jobs a month, couple of jobs, twenty five thousand bucks. I can't do the math in my head, but I got to think that's two and a half million dollars. Is that the number? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's a. Uh, that, you know, that's th those are the efficiencies that, that really, really make a difference. All right. Okay, here's a, here's a great question that just came in. So if you were a regular shareholder right now, knowing everything you know about SIRC, how much of your portfolio would you allocate and how long would you hold it? Um, I, I don't know if I can answer that question, but I, I'm, I'm very right. bullish. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> bullish on SIRC right now. I think it, we're... It says can't I, I think answer that one. <laughs> Yeah. I, I I think we're drastically undervalued. I, I really do. I mean, <laughs> I think I can say that. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fair enough. Um, okay, here's here's another good one. What are your thoughts on current margins, and where would you like to see them? And by when do you hope to get there? Well, current margins are fantastic. Um, with Pablo's model, he. Um, Gross is about 18%. And his um, his current model, I believe, he Pablo does it. He, he's one of the best CEOs I ever met. He, he has a pro forma that he puts in place, and just, he shows where every dollar goes and where everything, where every dollar is allocated. And he has a pro forma that shows that over the next 12 months, that U.S. Solar Network will do $55 million in residential solar and another $25 million in commercial solar and it's all said and done. I believe the net profit was like eleven million dollars. So he split that sixty forty. That's at seven million. You know, seven seven four or six and a half, three and a half million. And he's he's blowing those numbers away, and that's been great. And Future Home Power literally sells all their projects for probably twenty to twenty five percent higher than industry standards. So Jason is just you know he's nowhere near the normal margin price. So. We have a couple big hitters in the bullpen right now. I guess that's a reverse baseball saying. A couple big, big pitchers in the bullpen, and uh, I think we're getting those numbers exactly where we need to get them. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right. Here's another one that just came in. How is the company addressing the issue of accumulated deficit? Uh, when can we expect all of the debt to be paid off? 
Uh, you kind of already went over it. Yeah, I think all our convertible debt is, uh, I think it comes off our books in, uh, I think in May or June. So, okay. In the middle of next year, something like that. All right. Well, I mean, I, I think we went through all of the questions. Just wait a minute and see if anybody comes up with anything. Um, I don't know how much longer you have allocated to this. I'm 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 here till it's over. <laughs> um, does SIRC envision itself as a tech company or moving forward? I'm not sure if he meant to type more there, but you know. I... I, I don't, you know, I don't see us as a tech company. We're, you know, we're a, we're, we're a green energy company. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this guy meant a green energy company versus a roofing uh, construction company. Um, but it seems like you're more of both, honestly. You know, we're, we're definitely 85 to 90% solar EV and 10 to 15% roofing. I think that's a good balance. We were, you know, our model has changed a little bit now since we have U.S. Solar Network where you know, we're not looking to acquire the roofing companies anymore. We're we're looking to get them involved in our network with Pablo, which is, you know, it does a couple different things. One, it creates a monthly revenue you know, uh, stream for us because you know there's a fee to join the network as as you get them signed up. <clears throat> so as you sign guys up, you get a, you get a fee to to join, and it just you know it, it lowers the share count and just makes it more much more manageable. I mean, it just it works out perfect for us. So answer question, 85, 90%. All right. So All right. Um, about this one, what's the latest on any connection to IDEX and soul track? <laughs> um, soul track is the company that we had the $800 million grant with that we're the vendor for. And I believe soul track was purchased by, ideonomics and I know that they're a SPAC and they're out acquiring companies and uh, I think it'd be a good fit if, uh, if 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 we got an audience with them that's for sure all right um, oh here's one too how many women and minorities in upper management um Our management team is probably about 10 and we have uh, probably f uh, four women and minorities. I don't you know. I don't know what that looks like. I mean, is it, is it Asian? Is it Hispanic? Is it, I mean, you know, we have all type of ethnic people that work for us. We, you know, we love everybody. We just want to, we just want to work hard and make things happen. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> it looks like half the people are thrilled with that answer and half don't care. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, that sounds great. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Who's paying for the training of subcontractors to get them up to speed in the solar realm? You know, the subcontractors that we hire are solar subcontractors, licensed, bonded, insured solar com solar subcontractors. Uh, do we have uh, videos and training for them to do it the SRC way? Yes, we do. But they're licensed, bonded, insured solar contractors. All right. All right. Yeah, a few people have been asking too. They want to confirm that you'll be on Discord for, you know, roughly monthly shareholder calls. Yeah, our plan is uh, 
monthly, maybe twice a month, depends on what's going on, but definitely every month. And I don't know if you always get me. I'm happy to do it, but I think you guys like to hear from other people. We'll have Troy get on, we'll have Pablo get on. We might have uh, Scott with the roofing side get on, Randy. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll we'll spread it around and, you know, we'll do some group calls. But, you know, I think it's important for you guys to stay informed. Cause I know that we're moving really, really fast and it's tough to keep up with everything. We want to keep the facts out there and keep the keep the rumors down. All right. All right, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing some more questions come in, but I, I feel like you've answered most of this. So, Pew, if you've got a few more, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> That's all. Um, okay, yeah, so are you annoyed by shorters in the stock? Aside from growing organically, is there anything else you can do? You know, the shorters, I, you know, that world, I, you know, I, I don't even like to comment on it. I know it's part of the market and part of the industry. And my my goal as a CEO is to create results and create buying and buying will take care of the shorters. And we'll just, we, we like to just move past them and, you know, give people a reason to buy and not give them a reason to sell. That's, that's our goal. Yeah, great answer. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's basically it. You know, I've kept you on the line for roughly an hour here. So I, th I think we can call it there. And again, I have this all recorded, so anybody that missed it can can grab it and still listen in. Great. Well, again, we'll uh, we'll do this once a month, and we'll bring on some other folks. We'll get Pablo on here. Pablo's very impressive. He won the CEO of the Year Award either in 2020 or 2019, so he's He's a he's a valuable asset. And, you know the whole thing with lawsuit. I know it tainted the the acquisition. They thought it was a bad thing, but I think we'll we'll get past the lawsuit and move on and let those guys do what they need to do, and we'll just keep forging ahead. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I appreciate you taking your time. Great talking with you. Uh, try not to ask the same question twice. Too many times <laughs> next <laughs> next uh, next run. You know. <laughs> yeah, nice. And hopefully, if I got asked the same question twice, I, I end up giving the same answer twice. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, it's my pleasure. I enjoy it. Again, we'll we'll do more of it.